welcome to the first PSA professional player analysis. My hope through this is to give you guys a really, really detailed insight into how the players move, what their biomechanics look like, what it means for you in terms of muscles you got to strengthen and work through, and then also share some insight into some tactics and some technical work and maybe just go through some fun games and rallies and break them down in a bit more detail than we normally do. I'm getting all my stuff obviously from Squash TV, so bless Squash TV for being there. The first thing we're working on today is watching Ferris Dasuki's movement into the front left corner. Ferris is super strong, so some of his movement might make us feel, including myself to be honest, that it's not really feasible right away, but rest assured it's possible. And actually on that note, I could talk more about this later, I'm creating a program that's built to enhance our overall athleticism, but obviously focus more on squash because that's my expertise. And I'm gonna talk more about that later. But let's check out this end of this rally here between Ferris Dasuki and Tarek Momin from the recent 2021 CIB Men's Black Ball Open. So you see over here, Momin just strikes the ball. Dasuki is in the middle of his split step. As soon as Dasuki knows where the ball's going, you see him put that back foot down so he can start accelerating forward. And what you'll notice is his back foot, his heel does not necessarily strike the ground as much. It's more that he's on the balls of his feet. That allows for more power, more elastic power. It's more of a plyometric movement. So once he's done that, then you notice his split step. He's not totally upright. In order to start moving, he has to bend his knees a little bit. So now we're starting to mimic some squat style positions in this, uh, in this example. And then from there, he's got one powerful push, followed by, and you know, we can talk a bit about technique here in a minute as well, before he goes in for his lunge. And what you see there, he's going in, racket is nice and set, eyes are on the ball. And before he goes, you see the plant, he's going with the heel first, so that he can then absorb that landing. You notice his upper body's coming down. He's got, and I'm gonna talk about this more in a minute. He's got this joint angle over here. But before we get to the joint angle, I'd like to, let's talk a bit about the technique for a moment. He's coming in to play a drop shot. And what you'll notice is he's gonna make contact with the ball right at the bottom of his movement so that he can transfer all of that momentum and that energy into his drop shot. So that's a bit of the technical side of kind of putting in that ball and look how far forward he's actually making contact with the ball. Now the second thing, now this is more of like the uh, the fitness side of things, the analysis of the biomechanics. One, he's obviously got a nice strong back position, kind of looks a bit like a deadlift. He's got this knee angle over here where his knee is staying behind his heel. As soon as our knees start going over our toes, it activates totally different muscles. When our knees are in line with our heel or behind the heel, it activates totally different muscles. So now, you know, you gotta be very specific with your training, depending on the sort of movement patterns that you work with. And this takes different kinds of mobility and all sorts of stuff. And that program I mentioned actually works to get us strong in these positions that the top players are using. And there's a certain science behind how to do that. So again, I haven't created it yet, I have the outline of what it looks like, but I haven't recorded all the videos. So when it's ready, I will definitely share it with you if you are interested. So now let's keep going here. So we got that knee angle when he's making contact. Now he's already made contact with the ball and he's still got that solid knee angle. He's got that strong, strong back, ton, ton of strength required for that position. His back foot is also dragging in so that he can, one, it stabilizes him Two, it then helps with the recoil part of the movement. So you'll notice that in a minute. See, he's bringing that back foot in, his back starts going up. I can go back a little bit here. I drew this arrow. His back is recoiling, his back foot is coming in, and his front leg is pushing out, sort of all happening simultaneously. So the push out is happening simultaneously with the leg and the back, and that back leg is dragging in to narrow that base of support a little bit. 
and it can then assist to get him moving back to the tee. And you'll see here, he pushes out from that front leg and then the back leg absorbs some of that load and helps with that recovery. And let me go back here. And you notice that he's coming out with actually, this is another technical thing from the racket position. He's in a nice ready position so that that next ball that Tarek hits, he can react to it fairly easily. If his racket was down dangling by his feet, it would be a lot harder to get ready for the next shot. And then we'll go, keep going here for just a moment. He then finds his T position there. He already won the point and Tarek knew it. This was actually match ball, if I remember correctly. But if this was to continue, you notice that Ferris's movement, his T position is not actually where we would traditionally expect someone to go. And this is another sort of tactical technical idea of the floating T. So depending on where the game is being played, you adjust your T position accordingly based on where your opponent is, where you played your shot, the quality of your shot, all of those sorts of things. And I'm happy to talk more about that later if you guys are interested. So there you have it, guys. I hope that you found value in that. I hope that you got some insight into what the top players are doing when they're moving, the strength and power required. I'm not going to get into all the details of all the muscles and all of that and then how to work out all of those muscles because that's that's what the program is for. And when it's ready, if you're interested, send me a message, let me know, and I will be happy to share it with you. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.